world where there is growth without inequality, inequality, wealth without plunder, work without exploitation, a future without fear, and there comes a time when all that is harmful must leave, and you are those escorts. This is that time. It's not next year, it's not next decade, it is now. It is time for all that is harmful to life on earth, to people, to creatures, to cultures, and to children to leave. <laughs> Environmental restoration, elimination of poverty, it costs too much. Well, excuse me, that cannot be true, and that will never be true. Rather, we live in a time when harm is too darn cheap. That's what's going on here, right? So it has never been too expensive to educate a child. We heard the data. You can send something to Harvard University for the same cost. It, it, it costs in California than it does to imprison them, right? This is brilliant thinking. <laughs> when I am asked if I am pessimistic or optimistic about the future, I always give the same answer, which is if you look at the scientific data and you're not pessimistic, then you don't understand the data, okay? But if you meet the people who are working to restore the earth and the lives of the poor and you aren't optimistic that you haven't got a pulse, so, <laughs> what we see everywhere in the world are extraordinary people willing to confront despair, power, and incalculable odds again and again in order to restore some semblance of grace and justice and beauty to this world. I mean, essentially, humanity is reimagining what it means to be a human being. And the action is taking place in schoolrooms, and farms, and jungles, and slums, favelas, campuses, communities, refugee camps, deserts, fisheries, everywhere. And this shared activity is humanity's immune response to political corruption, economic disease, and environmental degradation. In no small part due to modern technology, individuals and organizations are associating, they're hooking up, they are reassembling into this mosaic of activity that you comprise as if we were solving a jigsaw puzzle without ever having seen the box. It's made up of teachers, it's made up of children's peasants, business people, rappers, organic farmers, nuns, artists, government workers, fisher folk, and students, incorrigible writers, weeping Muslims, concerned mothers, poets, doctors, and engineers without borders, weaving Christians musicians, the President of the United States of America, and as writer David James Duncan would say, the Creator, the one who loves us all in such a huge way. Now this movement is big, and I'd like to show you, uh, run a small tape for you, and to give you some sense of the dimension of a movement of which you are a part. And what you see here is a list of organizations. They're around the world, you see the organizations.